Welcome back to Turning Hard Times and Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor. Really pleased to have Kevin Duffy with us once again. And uh, Kevin was with us a few, I don't know, several weeks ago. And uh, really very interesting to have him because he has found a way to make money not only in gold and silver, but in a diverse portfolio. He certainly is a understands the need for uh, for honest money and honest monetary assets and commodities and other things in the portfolio. But he's found a way... Uh, to uh, to, to um, diversify his portfolio and his coffee can portfolio is very very diverse. So I'm really pleased to have him with us again. To maybe you can give us some hints about how to uh, about how to shape our own portfolios. Thanks for joining me again, Kevin. Jay, thanks for having me back on. You know, before we go any further, I forgot to make a note here. Uh, the website, uh, I guess they can do they can Google you, but where can they go to sign up for your letter? Sure. They can go to the coffee can portfolio.com or just okay. Google the, the coffee can portfolio. It should show up. Uh, sure. Very good. All right. Well, you know, these are crazy times, no doubt about it. What, what sort of, you know, how do you see the markets now? I mean, we had the COVID and now the war, it seemed to, you know, it's causing a lot of trouble with, with supply chains. I'm worried a lot about uh, food costs and so forth as a result of what's going on. But uh, what is, just give us a quick, summary of your views of, of the global markets right now. Sure. Well, um, yeah, I think we have to go back to uh, pre-COVID. We had uh, certainly a, a 10-year bull run. Um, S&P 500 went up nearly five times. Then we get hit by COVID. Um, we get a massive stimulus response. Um, and so the initial sell-off, about, about a third correction in the S&P, um, brings the, uh, the market to new highs. We get this just a crazy bubble or a series of bubbles, including the Kathy Woods uh, funds and the meme stocks and, uh, you know, you name it. Um, yeah. And it was basically uh, lock everybody down, give them a bunch of stimulus money and uh, shut down the other competing casinos in terms of sports uh, and uh, funnel it all into the stock market casino. So that um, that really peaked in about January uh, February of last year, and that was the, the the time when all the headlines were positive, the economists were all giddy, uh, the economy was going to have the fastest growth out of the, uh, the the brief recession since the early 1950s, um, the the vaccines were on the way, uh, economy was reopening, everything was was wonderful, um, and you know we have now uh, the narrative has shifted and it's uh, a lot darker. Uh, we now have uh, uh, a, a war in uh, Ukraine. Um, we have um, the stimulus drug wearing off. The vaccines didn't go according to plan. Um, we have this cold war uh, with with China. Um, so we're in this, uh, of course, as you mentioned, we have the supply chain issues, inflation, uh, fastest um, rise in inflation. We're up at 7.9 percent, at least in terms of the measured inflation, fastest since um, uh, in 40 years. So we've really come full circle. And um, I think, you know, bottom line, number one, the economy is we're going into a recession. Um, I don't think there's there's any way around that. The odds of that are extremely high and it may be take the uh, the stagflationary form. Um, and then uh, on the other hand, um, we've seen a massive correction in the in the very stocks that were screaming um, a year ago are have been absolutely pummeled. And so it's probably time to start looking for some bargains there. Mm hmm. Yeah, because um, I don't know. I looked at the S and P this morning. I think it was down around eleven percent year over uh, from January. Uh, but I think, as you mentioned, that 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 metric is pretty deceiving because it's just a few of the big guys that are holding up the uh, the average, and you have a lot of a lot of companies that are that have gotten whacked pretty hard. And so, I guess as a value investor, that's what the kind of thing you've got your eyes on, right? Yeah, so let, I can uh, put some numbers on this. Again, I think the the inflection point was really January, uh, probably late January of last year. That was the the peak in the uh, the Arc um, funds and uh, also the meme stocks. Now we, um, as those corrected, it's similar to the dot com bubble bursting in two thousand, where you had the uh, the rest of the market rally during the summer. So we had this uh, divergence. But anyway, if we look at that inflection point 
of, of January of last year. Since then, the S&P 500 is actually up 14%, even though it's corrected about 11 or 12% um, from the high. But um, S&P up 14%, NASDAQ 100 actually up 3%. Um, the ARC Innovation Fund that I mentioned, uh, Kathy Wood, down 61%. Wow. And um, then you look at something um, that's not quite as aggressive, the uh, Barron Global Advantage Fund, down about 38%. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at now what's done well, of course, has been commodities. Energy is up 83%, mm -hmm. and the CRB index is up 66%. Um, and value value stocks have outperformed growth by about 14%. So there is... There's a lot going on there. Um, there's a lot of carnage, and there have been some some huge winners and some huge losers. Right, and so I, I would like to, um, well, certainly want to get into uh, the way you the way you pick your stocks and the way your your portfolio. And you have you have several uh, major themes that you uh, that you put in your newsletter that I think are really interesting. First off, um, the first, I think, where you're heavy, most heavily weighted, uh, the inflation is not dead theme. And um, you say precious metals will benefit and global bond bubble will burst. Uh, you've got, if I understand this, 16.2% of your portfolio in that, focused in that, in that, with that concept, right? Right. So, um, yeah, as far as the in inflation theme, um, Let's see. I can I can pull this up right now. Mm -hmm. um, we have okay. So the sixteen point two percent J is uh, mm -hmm. is actually um, precious metals. So we we own right, a, right, a right, physical right, precious right, metals right. funds. Now right, right. we also have um, we own gold stocks. Um, we own a uh, we actually own Sprott Inc., which is a um, mm -hmm. an asset manager, which is heavily into the resource uh, and precious metals area. Um, we own royalty companies, so that's in another 20% or so. Um, but, yeah, that's a significant part of the portfolio. And that has not moved anywhere near as much as the, the other commodities. So, um, But we do also have some exposure to uh, fertilizer and, and energy. But, you know, those are the areas that have really run right now. And so our tendency is to – to just kind of stand pat um, and maybe even trim a little bit in, in that area, not much, because I think you've got two things going on, you know, supply and demand um, and high prices. The cure for high prices is high prices. So we are we are getting demand destruction and um, I think we're going into a recession. So that's going to be a negative. Mm -hmm. um, but on the supply side, you're, you're just not able to bring new supply to that air area. So I think the long-term investment thesis holds, but I think um, you have to be able to kind of look through this this global recession, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see the energy stocks correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah. I mean, they've gone up, you know, oil just shot up, and it's down to around, you know, from, uh, what, 120 or so to 90 in just a, a few trading sessions. So your so your inflation is not dead theme. You've got between the uh, between the metal itself, um, you got CEF. That's uh, the Central Fund of Canada. That's I think a Sprott fund now, but that's sixteen point two percent. As I say, that's gold and silver. I think it's a mix of the two, right? It's a sixty forty mix, right? Six, sixty forty in favor of gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then AEM, Agnigal Eagle, I guess ASA FNV. And yes, uh, so I so I see. Yeah, okay. Well, that makes sense. And so basically, thirty seven percent of your portfolio in the, in that sector. So that's by far and away. And then you said uh, the next theme is uh, the imminent death of fossil fuels. Well, not quite. Uh, and how are you playing that? You've got several things right. here. So we um, we we own like I, I mentioned fertilizer and also uh, natural gas uh, um, and um, uh, EMP companies. Um, I've, I've got a, uh, an oil services company in there and mm -hmm. actually, uh, bought the, uh, the falling knife in, uh, in Russia. We, uh, we bought a little bit of the, uh, Russia ETF, which, uh, hasn't worked out so well <laughs> so far, but, uh, you know, here's crossing our fingers. So we have a, a, a small stake in that. What is that ETF? Uh, RSX. 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 Okay. Yeah. The okay. Van Eck. 
Well, we'll see how that happens and how that works out. Nine, nine point, a little over a nine percent in that sector. Right. And then you've got um, Amazon.com is not going to pull to put all retailers out of business. In other words, um, there will be some competition for Amazon eventually. And um, so, how are you playing that? I mean, you're you're buying various retailers. I guess you think have a shot at at, uh, at doing well in spite of Amazon. Right. Now, this is an area that um, what I really like to latch on to is uh, simple narratives and, and start to, and when they get repeated over and over again, uh, and, and look below the surface. Uh, and so that really led, and, and also to take a very much a, a contrarian approach. So, um, you know, everybody knows that Amazon is going to put all the retailers out of business. They know the malls are dead and, and all the rest of it. And the, you know, the real story in my mind is that um, is that these companies have really adapted. Um, they have Amazon has, has picked a lot of the low hanging fruit. Um, they uh-huh. bankrupted a number of companies like like Borders. Um, but there are a lot of retailers that have survived that and they've adapted with the omni-channel model. So they're basically e-commerce companies. These are these are really technology companies or companies that have ad- adopted technology, but they're sort of cast into this discard pile of these, uh, you know, really beaten down stocks. And um, it is remarkable, Jay. Uh, I mean, I don't need to go through the whole list of these these companies, but mm-hmm. um, what I'm doing is just building a basket. I've got, um, you know, nine or 10 of these right now. And um, the other beauty of this is that, the retailers can touch some of the other themes. So, for example, if you want to get long agriculture, mm-hmm. you might own tractor supply. Mm-hmm. Or um, another area that we get into a little bit further down the list is the emergence of uh, emerging markets and the, the middle class consumer, especially in China. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's a lot of negative news in China and um, right now, and, and a stock that that we like and have owned for a long time is Skechers USA. Mm-hmm. Now Skechers is um, is based in in Southern California, but they do and they have a you know kind of a stodgy business. They're in the the casual footwear business. They're, they're the third largest casual foot, footwear company. Uh huh. Um, and uh, but they do half of their business overseas and uh, most of that is in Asia and they have a, a pretty good exposure to China. So, you know, the stock trades at 10 times earnings and I think it's a, you know, it's got a great balance sheet, but these are the kinds of, of opportunities that you see within retail. And like I said, they can, they can check boxes of some of these other themes that we might want exposure to. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, value investing is not dead. Gamco is, a, I guess, is a company you've got. Uh, so passive investing is not going uh, to put all active managers out of business. But so where do you what do you see the the trend here? Um, right, what's, there what's, been, you know one of the things that I like to look at from a, a contrary standpoint is um, fund flows mm-hmm. and the flows out of active funds and into passive funds over the last 10 years has been staggering. It's been, uh-huh. it's been a, a swing of, I think over $3 trillion. It's just a, a staggering number. And, you know, I think one way to look at that as an investor, it's kind of like you have these two ponds, right? And you've got um, the one pond has, you know, everybody realizes oh, there's a bunch of fish in that pond. And so everybody, and the, and the other pond is kind of, fished out so that mm-hmm. so the fishermen all gravitate to the to the other pond mm-hmm. and um and it gets overfished and the uh meanwhile the pond that gets abandoned the fish are multiplying and there's nobody there and i think that really describes what's going on with passive investing so mm-hmm. we can we can look at this from a valuation standpoint you might look at let's say blackrock blackrock yeah. trades at about six times revenue um mm-hmm. Franklin Resources, which would be your classic value manager, trades at about um, two times revenue. Uh-huh. And then T. Rowe Price, which would be an active manager, but it's more of your, your classic growth manager, it trades at about four times revenue. So I think that gives you a sense. And, you know, the asset management business is really a, a terrific business. Um, 
You know, you can also look at this. I mentioned Skechers. Skechers is a great illustration. If you um, if you compare Skechers to Nike, okay, um, both global footwear brands. Nike, of course, is bigger than uh, significantly bigger than Skechers, but they both have these um, uh, you know big global footprints. And uh, but if you look at the metrics in terms of the go- growth metrics and the balance sheet and all the rest of it, I mean. Skechers is uh, a, a better company than Nike. It's got better prospects. And yet um, the difference, and I haven't looked at the, the PE of, of Nike, but it's got to be, it's over 20 times versus 10 times for Skechers. So I think that illustrates this, um, this huge disparity between um, passive and active investing. And it really shows that for an active investor, this is really, it's like being a mosquito in a nudist colony right now. You know, it's really a, a target-rich environment. Yeah. So you like Gamco, I think. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Mario Gabelli's um, yeah. firm. Mm-hmm. I mean, we they, he owns, uh, I think, 78%, 80% of the, of the stock. Um, I like, I tend to like uh, stocks with founder, um, that, that are founder run, that have mm-hmm. uh, people who have a lot of skin in the game. They can take the long view. I'm, I'm definitely a long term investor, so I want I want people running them that are really taking the long view, and that's a good way to get um, our interests aligned with uh, with the people running them. Now I noticed this just because there's so many other themes that we won't have time to talk about. But bloated governments is a, a theme number twelve in your letter. And I believe I saw that maybe uh, the one stock that you had there, an ETF TBF, which is a short on the 20-plus year treasuries, U.S. treasuries, right? I think you might have sold that now. We did. Um, and that, that was really a tough choice because um, – and this is the problem when you have all of these different ideas – you know, you can only put 100% into the portfolio. So yeah. um, if you make room for something, and like I said, I, I'm getting my, my ducks lined up in some of these uh, growth areas, some of these, um, you know, more optimistic themes. I mean, we've talked about some of the more pessimistic themes. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm trying to get um, – you know, I'm trying to get my ducks lined up for that, and I just had to make some room in the portfolio. So I thought, as much as it pained me to to sell that, because I really do think that uh, interest rates are going to be going up longer term, but mm-hmm. I'm trying to envision a, a scenario right now where um, we have a lot of – we still have a lot of complacency, I think. Mm-hmm. We have the uh, individual retail investor who was really at the gambling table last year. I think they're they're hanging on. Margin debt is is still quite high, um, and so I could see where there's a, a, a forced liquidation. And I just felt like I needed to raise some cash. And there could even be a uh, a safe haven bid in an environment like that. And you might actually see uh, people investors scramble towards um, towards treasuries. But mm-hmm. longer term, I'm definitely I'm bearish. On, on governments, on bearish on on their debts, uh, and and uh, so yeah. you know it's probably an idea we will revisit in the future. Well, sure, but if we're going to have an equity market, I mean, I I think we could see quite a quite a lot of downside on the equity markets yet. Uh, then there could be a lot of money, I would think, going over into the uh, in, into the funds and, and into the treasuries, and that would make sense for me that you're selling this for the, for the time being. You would always get back into it. Uh, with just a couple of minutes left here, and one, another uh, fi- another area where you've done extremely well, uh, the theme is the middle class will, will be squeezed in the United States. And in China, the middle class will expand. But in the States, in the more developed countries, you're seeing a squeeze. And Dollar Tree has done extremely well for, me, for you, from what I can see. Y- yes. Um, and... You know, so there's really um, a, a couple of areas, but that that is a unfortunately a theme, and I think this is a, is also a byproduct of ESG, the mm-hmm. underinvestment in commodities. We're seeing gasoline prices go up, and so it just seems like all these interventions that the government pulls off, they always hit the lower uh, mm-hmm. rungs of the ladder and they climb up to the the middle class. So we just see, see that as a long term theme, and um, the dollar stores. Um, Dollar General, Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has run quite a bit, but I think Dollar General has actually gotten pulled down with a lot of the other growth stocks. 
So um, that might be something to look at that's, that hasn't done quite as well. All right. We'll have to leave a go at that, Kevin. I want to thank you so much. There's so many other themes we could talk about. Migration trends away from high tax, high crime cities. That was another theme. The economy will become more information based and location independent. Uh, yeah. So there's just a lot of other things we don't have time for. So we are out of time. I want to thank you so much for sharing your time and thoughts with us, Kevin. And uh, I want to tell our listeners it's coffeecanportfolio.com to sign up for Kevin's letter, very reasonably priced letter. And I think a lot of very valuable information uh, to help you diversify and navigate some very troubled waters. Thank you so much, Kevin, for being with us. Thanks, Jake. Have a good day.